Now recall that integers are any number that is not a fraction and does not contain a decimal. Look, the number 8 does have a decimal. If you don't see the decimal, it is right at the end. So 8 is the same as 8 decimal 0. However, the way they are expressed will make a difference as to whether one is an integer, whereas the other one is not. This one here is not an integer. This one is, even though they are the same amount. Um, if this was money, they'd be the same amount of money. Okay, now integers are also rational numbers, and this is another lesson in this series of rational numbers. It's not a detailed lesson into integers. That was done in the past. I've got lessons on that. You can go back and review those. This is a lesson as to how integers can behave as rational numbers and how to convert them into equivalent fractions. Let me show you an example. 8 is actually 8 over 1. Now, 8 over 1 is not an integer anymore because I've written it as a fraction. But let's take a look at this as a value. I can take the number 8, which is an integer. I can break the rule for integers. I can make it 8 over 1. Now it's not an integer anymore. But I can take that value 8. I can times this by 2. I can times that by 2. And now 8 all of a sudden becomes 16 over 2. A fraction. It's not an integer anymore. It's a fraction. I'm taking an integer, which is 8. And I'm converting it into an equivalent fraction. That's the point of this lesson. 16 over 2 is the same as 8. 8, I can also multiply by another number. Let's multiply by 3. Let's erase that. Make it neater. We can multiply this now by 3. And multiply the denominator by 3. And we've got ourselves 24 over 3, which is also equivalent to 8. We can also times by 4. If we did that, we're going to get 32 over 4. And that is also, let's fix that up, 32 over 4 is also equivalent to 8. These are all equal to one another, and they are all the value. They all have a value of 8. The number negative 3 now is an integer. Let's turn it into an equivalent fraction. Negative 3, if I times the top and the bottom, where's the bottom? It's not written in there because it's an integer. You're not allowed to write it in. But let's break the rule here. We'll put a 1 on the bottom. It's right there. If we double the top and the bottom, we create negative 6 over 3. If I triple these times them both by 3, I'm going to get negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And 1 times 3 is going to be 3. And these two are equivalent. Times this by 4, times that by 4. We're going to get negative 12 over 4. Now look at this. This is equivalent to that, which is equivalent to that, which is equivalent to that. They're all the same value. How about the number 1? Make it 1 over 1. We can double both. We're going to get 2 over 2. Triple both. We're going to get 3 over 3. <laughs> yeah, quadruple them. Let's do that. 4 over 4. We can also take, since these are all equivalent to one another, we can take any one of these and do stuff to it. Like we can times this by 10, times that by 10, we're going to get 30 over 30. And that's going to be equivalent to 1 over 1. How about negative 6? You can try that on your own if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and do it. We can double the top and the bottom. We're going to get negative 12 over 2. We can triple them. Triple this times by 3. You're going to get negative 18 over 3. We can times, hey, let's let's take these two, since they're equal. We can double any of these. We can triple them. We can do anything we want to them. As long as what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. You do it to the top, you double the top, you double the bottom. You triple the top, you triple the bottom. Go ahead and sort these into the proper column. But I will give you a little bit of advice. You can take the 12, you can write it over 1. Take the 4, write it over 1, and that will help you match them up with any of these. Go ahead and pause the video and try this on your own. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm assuming you've pushed play again. I'm going to take 36 over 3 and line it up with the bottom. Is, oops, 36 over 3. How do you turn the 1 into 36? You times by 3. Well, if you times the top by 3, 4 times 3 is 12. Ah, it doesn't work. So let's see what, what happens with the top. If I take a look at the denominator, that's 1. Times it by 3, you get 3. Yes. Take the 12. Times it by 3. Yes, it works. 36. That's why it spun. How about 84? Does it go over here? Well, let's see here. 1 times 7 
is seven. Good. Four times seven. Oh, it's, oh no, it doesn't work. It's four times seven is 28. That says 84. So it must match with the top. Let's prove it though. One times seven is seven times the top by seven. Do you get 84? Yes, we do. Let's take 12 over three. Put it over here. Let's see. It works. Yes, it does. It spun twice. One times three is three. Four times three is 12 and it works. Okay. How about 24 over two? That's going to match up with the top, right? Double the one, double the 12. It works. 36 over nine. It's going to go to the bottom. One times nine, four times nine. They both make the right numbers here. How about 16 over four? Yes, the bottom. 